Something interesting I've noticed this year is that when I review a game that I really enjoy, but that missed the mark a bit, I'm far more critical and talk at far greater length about those misses than I do about a game that maybe I don't like or I find objectively bad. And in some ways it feels a little unfair, but at the same time, I absolutely know why I'm doing it. I get passionate because I care about these games because I can see how close they came to creating a masterpiece, and unfortunately, in just about every art form, that gap between really good and masterpiece can be incredibly small. Sea of Stars is a really good game, and I'm going to spend most of the video talking about why. But then I'm also going to spend some time talking about where it falls short, in my opinion. But it won't be because I don't like the game, or even that I don't think you should play the game. It will be because this Chrono Trigger inspired RPG was so close to really being a Chrono Trigger successor. More so than I think even most people can see. Before I get started, a couple of things. First, Sea of Stars is available with PC Game Pass, and Xbox gave me a free PC Game Pass subscription for a month to check out some titles. That said, if you're a normal viewer of the channel, you will know I've been a PC Game Pass subscriber, and I talk about the service fairly often which actually made this a really good fit. Also, if you enjoy the video, maybe hit the like button or subscribe. And with that covered, let's talk about what makes Sea of Stars so good, and then a little bit about the missed opportunities. Normally, I barely talk about graphics, and when I do, it's usually buried somewhere in the middle, and it's a couple sentences. Graphics typically don't matter that much to me. But I just have to say right out of the gate, this game is absolutely beautiful. Like, to the point where I'm not sure I can think of another game with this 2D pixel art art style that looks even close to this good. In particular, I can easily say I've never seen 2D pixel art games that do lighting this good. The detail packed into every sprite and every background is just amazing. The music and the sound are also excellent throughout. From an artistic standpoint, this game is absolutely top tier. The gameplay, for the most part, is exactly what you'd expect out of a turn-based RPG. You and your party explore towns, dungeons, the world, occasionally discovering treasures and secrets, and engaging in turn-based battles. The combat is mostly what you'd expect as well, but there are a few interesting additions. First, your melee attacks can be extended for an additional attack with a timed button press. Similarly, you can press the same button for a timed block that slightly reduces damage. The combat also has an interesting flow where your melee attacks restore MP, it also drops some orbs called Live Mana, which are a resource that let you empower your melee attacks with magic damage. So let's say one of your characters is out of MP. You may use your melee attack, which will restore a few MP, and also drop some orbs, or Live Mana, that will empower another melee attack. So then another character, with Poison Magic, can choose to absorb those orbs, empowering their attack with Poison Magic. They will also get MP back when they attack, but they actually won't drop any of those live mana orbs because they're actually using an empowered attack rather than a basic attack. Saying it out loud makes it sound a lot more complicated than it is. It's pretty straightforward once you get the hang of it. You can then spend that MP on abilities. Each character has three predetermined abilities that they will gain throughout the game, and eventually they'll also gain an ultimate. These are your typical fare for the most part, magic attacks, heals, and so on. There are some interesting abilities that do things like group up enemies for more easy AoE attacks, or one that delays an enemy action. For the most part though, these are exactly what you'd expect. There are a few other systems as well. As you attack, you will gather combo points, which cap at 3, that you can spend on combo abilities. These are attacks where two characters perform the attack together. These are a bit stronger than your normal abilities and have some interesting animations with them usually. Also, as you perform actions, particularly the combos, the ultimate meter will start to fill. Once full, a character of your choice can perform their ultimate, which is generally a fairly strong attack, as the title suggests. One other system is that you can sometimes interrupt an enemy ability with the right combination of attacks. For example, an enemy may show two sword icons, a sun icon, and then two hammers, which indicate blunt damage. If you're able to hit the enemy with those attacks before their turn, then you'll actually interrupt them. This is used a lot, particularly on bosses, and it is fairly interesting. It does create some situations where you have to decide which enemy to interrupt and which one to let go. It does get a little less interesting when there's no way to actually perform that combination, 
but I'm sure to a point that's by design because of difficulty reasons. As far as the difficulty goes though, this is where I need to offer my first criticism. The game is pretty easy for the most part. If you have any experience with turn-based RPGs, almost nothing is going to come close to wiping your party. I actually only had it happen once, and it was a section where you're down to two party members rather than three, and it honestly felt like it was just still tuned for three. Honestly, I would have welcomed the challenge, but it totally caught me off guard. Other than that though, there just wasn't much challenge here, even during the boss battles. There are ways that you can make it harder on yourself with these relics that you can equip, but that is kind of artificial and it's not something I would typically do, although I guess to be fair that sort of makes it a me problem to some extent. Still, I would rather they were just able to put in a hard difficulty, although it sounds like maybe that is coming up in an upcoming DLC. Either way, the game is definitely on the easy side. Also, rather than having potions, you have food that you can eat to restore HP and MP. Out of all the systems in the game, I actually liked this the most. But to me, it was the kind of the tightest system. On the surface, it's fairly simple. You collect some ingredients, occasionally learn new recipes, and that allows you to craft food. You can have up to 10 food items. That 10 item cap is actually great because it prevents you from going overboard, crafting tons of food that you don't need, or feeling like that you need to. It also allows the developers to actually more finely tune encounters, knowing that you can only have so much food and you can only restore a certain amount of HP and MP. I really enjoyed this over traditional potions. It feels like you're making meaningful choices about what to bring with you. It just really would have taken a harder difficulty for it to really show through. Overall though, combat is really polished. It plays great. The systems work well together and it keeps combat interesting. It's just not very difficult. The story and the characters here are good, but I'd be hard-pressed to call them great. The main characters are solstice warriors born on the solstice that have powers over the sun and moon. They are able, and expected, to use those powers to defeat monsters called dwellers, which inhabit the world. It serves its purpose, and you care about these characters to some extent, but it just isn't very deep. There are a handful of semi-hard-hitting moments, but they are so far and few between, the dialogue and the story are interesting enough that you probably wouldn't find yourself wanting to skip it, since you will be attached to these characters to some extent, but it's not something that I think is really going to define your experience with Sea of Stars. The character depth, though, is actually an area where I really struggle to give the game a pass. A lot of the character motivations feel very one-dimensional, and you really feel the hand of the writer a bit too much as you're playing through. These characters have to do a thing, act in a specific way because the story demands it. And that's honestly something that I struggle with kind of in all forms of media. When it comes to the world in Sea of Stars, it is interesting and engaging, but there are still some missed opportunities when it comes to the gameplay of the world. Exploration for one feels very limited. There aren't many secrets and most of the things you find, you were meant to find. If you play RPGs, you will feel yourself kind of fall into this invisible path. The treasures and the secrets are exactly where you would expect, and they're not hard to find at all. If you can't figure out a puzzle, or if you can't figure out how to get to a secret, odds are you're missing something very obvious, because there really just isn't much challenge to them. It's all pretty much right out there for you to find. From a world building standpoint, I actually think the team did a really good job here. This world is interesting, and you naturally want to know more about its history and the people in it. I still want to know more about some of the large creatures and NPCs I encountered. I still want to understand why some of the characters did what they did. I want to understand the history of some of the places I visited. And it says a lot that I care enough about this world to desperately want those things. It speaks to how interesting this world is that they created. It just unfortunately doesn't spend enough time really digging deep into it. There is a character in the camp that helps fill in some of those details but that really isn't a substitute for experiencing it in the campaign. Up to this point, most of the things I've complained about have actually been more nitpicks than they have been major flaws. One area of the game that does fall fairly short, though, is the character progression, which typically you would expect to be a significant part of any RPG. It's very, very basic here. When you gain a level, you automatically gain some MP, HP, attack power, defense, so on. With every level, you can, for each character, choose one of those areas to have a little bit of extra. Unfortunately, I could never notice a difference. It all felt the same. 
Other than that, you do gain equipment, but most of it isn't very interesting. Weapons are very basic, they're just simple increases to damage. Armor is similarly basic, there's just defense and magic defense. Trinkets do offer some customization like restoring MP on timed blocks or allowing you to see enemy weaknesses and HP, but most aren't like that. Most are simple, plus magic defense, or plus HP. The weapons and the armor upgrades are also really scripted. Maybe that's the word I'm looking for. I'm honestly struggling for the right word. Sometimes they come from a vendor, sometimes it's from a chest, but after a certain amount of time, the game will funnel you towards that armor or that weapon upgrade. You never have a moment where you discover a really cool weapon or a really cool piece of armor or a really powerful weapon or piece of armor. They are just very steady incremental upgrades that you won't notice and honestly, I got almost no value from them. And those items and small stat choices are the only choices you make for your party. Outside of just a few trinkets, there just isn't anything interesting as far as character progression. Again, I know I just complained a lot about a lot of different things, but I actually do highly recommend the game. I complain only because this game is so good that these opportunities stand out far, far more. I desperately hope this team either makes a sequel or takes what they learned with this game and make another RPG, because I think they have the ability to make an RPG that is a masterpiece. This just isn't quite it. That said, it's still a very fun game. Overall, if you like RPGs, definitely give Sea of Stars a shot. It's a game that's unlikely to change your life, but you will probably have a good time. So, with that said, if you liked the video, maybe hit the like button, maybe subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.